Hi guys, so today I have a couple items to share with you that had uh, been sent over from Craft Stash uh, just to kind of familiarize people with some of their um, lines that they create, their exclusive lines, right? One of them has to, happens to be the Creative Craft Products. So I have a couple items here. They were sent free of charge for my review and of course all opinions are my own. And any links I have in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you were purchased items to those links. Um, so thanks for using those. They're just right in the description box right under the video here. Um, I already opened these in the video where um, Craft Stash had offered a giveaway and I believe the giveaway ended last Sunday. So good luck. Um, let me know if you were the winner. <laughs> and um, so that was very kind of them. And then they sent items over that I can uh, try out and show you guys again about their lines. So again, this is Creative Craft Products. I do want to mention that I did notice on their website they do say that they are they might have uh, some delay in sending out orders because they are switching warehouses. And that was just a note that I saw on their website um, the last couple days. So just know that. Keep that in mind um, if you are placing orders, you know, in the next few days here. I mean, I don't know how long it takes to move a whole warehouse, but I just want to let you guys know that. Um, so this bundle has this little uh, board here, and this actually also comes in a magazine. So if the magazine is still available, I will link that in the description box. Um, I got the same magazine in, and it is exactly this uh, little tool here. But the way I had grabbed this from Craft Stash is part of a bundle. So it was the scoring tool, scoreboard, and envelope box maker, and this little guy. So what we'll do today is probably make one of the pro uh, projects from here. Um, and then something on the um, scoring board there. So as you can see what this one, and I'm over here playing around with it a little too much probably, um, you have this acetate overlay, and so you would place your piece of paper, you know, whatever size it is that you need to cut it down for that project, and you would place this on top, so play, you have this, you have your paper, you place this over, and you take this guy, and this is what helps you get the lines onto your uh, cardstock, or whatever you're using. Uh, generally cardstock, I would think. So this gives you uh, info how to make a pillow box, the milk carton, and the gift box. Gift box is very uh, straightforward here, so what I'll probably do is um, maybe the pillow box because it'll be kind of quicker since I want to want to review the um, scoreboard. So I'll put this to the side for just a moment. And this little guy is has centimeters. It's 23 or I guess maybe 23 half centimeters at the edge here, and 16 centimeters or 16 and a half on the other side. I don't believe it has inches, so there's that. And then this is the scoreboard that does have uh, inches and then along the other side is also an inches. So very cool. Perfect for creating envelopes, envelope boxes, gift boxes, invitations, and more. And I don't know why, I just I really want to make a rosette today. So hopefully we can get to that. Um, I do want to show you, of course, the basics of it, which would be making cards and um, envelopes. So let me pop it out of this. I know that sound some people don't appreciate and I'll be right back. So we have our beautiful board. It's like a creamy kind of ivory color. On the back here they're showing you some info on envelope making, envelope box making, gift box making. Of course we make lots of gift boxes so we have all that info here and we'll talk about that in just a minute when we get there. So again from 0 to 12 and it actually even has a 12 and an 8th I would say. I think these are, yeah. Oh it has 8th lines. So every eighth of an inch so a quarter inch but in between there you have your eighth and then uh, three eighths and one half and five eighths and three quarters and seven eighths and one inch love it I any scoreboard I get I, I it needs to have the eighth of an inch like that's just a standard must for me um, on this other side here oh look at that you just pop this out there's a little grippy here too I just kind of pushed it out but this is your um, what helps you make your envelopes and your envelope boxes and then your tool is also on board right here it slides out really nicely it holds on really nicely too so it wasn't hard to get out but it also was held in there really nicely and you basically use this this way something like that and you're going to pop this in here and make your um your envelopes so let's talk about making a basic card and an envelope to go with it so let's see here instruction for envelope okay if your card size is this you want these things so let's just i don't know let's say the card is oh yeah um there's lots of different things on here five and a half by seven six by six uh four by five and a half what's interesting about the five and a half by seven it says a seven and i know we usually do five by sevens in the u.s so that's something to think about um over here we have like 
Oh, okay, and this is if you want the box size to end up a certain size. So down here, instead of looking at the card size and then going with what size paper you need and what marks, you're looking at the box size and then your paper size. So if you want the box to be three by two and a quarter by three eighths of an inch thick or three and quarters of an inch thick, and, and it goes from there. So you really have to think about what you're looking for as far as your project goes. Um, Sorry, guys, let's I was about do to misspeak. So five. I was um, looking at this and I was like, yeah, four by five and a half. No, I, for an A2, it's obviously four and a quarter by five and a half. And so I'm going to cut some paper down for an A2 size card, which means we need a piece of paper that's uh, five and a half by eight and a half. And then for the envelope, we need the paper to be eight inch square. Okay. So I did have some papers here that I figured I'd be using today. Let me grab my trimmer and I'm just gonna set it here but normally you want to you know put that on a flat surface <laughs> I have a scrap piece of paper here that I think is good it has the eight and a half inches already so on this other side we'll do five and a half so that'll be our card base that we'll create very easily you just score it and you're good to go and then we need again an eight inch square piece of paper for the envelope and this is just white paper of course you can use some pattern paper and punch it up really fun so we have eight inch paper Ooh, if you have a machine large enough, you can probably emboss this with some embossing folders that are a little bit larger. Just run it through twice. I know I have some big embossing folders, but not that big. But if you did part of it and then the other part. Okay, so I'm going to put this here. And of course with our cards, again, 8.5 by 5.5 so I can make it uh, a 2 size card. Um, you're just going to score it at four and a quarter. And this paper that I'm using is kind of thin. Really nice. Um feel on this guy. I like that it's like beveled in here. Again, not so sharp that it's going to cut through your paper, but it feels really nice. Cute little color. Little uh, tool there. And I'm going to take this out of here. And for me, whenever I have a scoreboard and after I've used it for a little bit, but I usually do it almost at the beginning, <laughs> I mark with a sharpie the four and a quarter. It's easy enough to look at it and say, okay, four and a quarter, it's right here. But I love to just look at it and know that's where my mark is and I just go for it, you know. So we have our, our uh, card base and if you saw that I pushed it up against this edge and then put this down and lined it up. So that way you have more guarantee that's going to be nice and even right on your edges there. And then as far as the envelope maker, I know earlier I think I had put it there. It's, it doesn't really go there. <laughs> it goes over here. So you have this little like um, diagonal area here. I'm just going to get a little bit closer. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to take this little guy and put it here. Oh, look at it. It locks in. Hmm, what's having it lock in like that? Basically you want to continue it, of course, not too far over or not too far in, but just right on the edge. Just continue it here, which really means placing this at five and an eighth, so that'll help you. But it just locks in. Oh, because this long piece here, see there's like a longer little raised area? Oh, and on the back of this it has instructions for gift box. This is really great because every time I make a gift box, I always come up with the numbers on my own, but they're already here for a lot of sizes, and all you have to do is follow the paper size and then know where to score the base, where to score the lid. And when they're talking about this, it's not because you're using the envelope side. You just have the numbers in for reference, and you're using these sides, right? That's really cool. Aw. Okay. Um, all right, so let's place this here where we need it for the envelope. So for your basic envelope, it's telling me... For four and a quarter by five and a half, we need an eight inch square piece of paper. And then three and a half is where we're uh, measuring this on the scale mark, it says. And so I just want to make sure I do have an eight inch square. Okay, so what we're going to do is take this and just place it. doesn't matter which side you start with. But what you are going to do is line up the corner with these guide sizes. Okay, we're not talking about any of these numbers up here right now. So uh, three and a half. So let's go to three and a half. So I just have that little point at three and a half. I do want to make mention if it says three and three eighths or three and five eighths or two and an eighth, whatever it might say, those are there, right? So this would be three and three eighths, three and five eighths, three and an eighth, you know, two and seven eighths. It's not marked, but they have a little line there depicting that area. So three and a half. So our first score line at three and a half. And I'm using really, really thick paper this time, so I'll probably score it a few times, even though I scored the other one a few times too. I just like to score a few times. All right, that's our first mark. The next time we're gonna rotate it, and we're just rotating it. I'm gonna rotate it this way because we want that line to be another registration mark for us at this point. So what you're gonna do is take that registration line and line it up right here. 
Okay, and if you look at the box, you do have your instructions. Um, let's see what it says about that. Cut your paper to size required. Um, okay, align the corner with the scale mark listed. Score vertically from this, the score annotation to create score line one, which we did. Rotate paper 90 degrees, so now that score line's at the top, which we just did. Aligning score line one with the edge line of the envelope box, which is this. Now it doesn't say here edge line, just looking at it, that's what that is. This little piece that's sticking out. Okay, and then we're going to score again. So right now we're not worried about sizes, we're just looking at the edge line. And I'm putting it right on that score line, I don't know if that's supposed to be under or above. I'm putting it right on that line. So, we'll see. Hopefully that was the right call. <laughs> so, again, scoring, scoring, scoring a few times, that's what I like to do. Turning it again, so that line is up. Now we are going to continue doing the same thing, meaning aligning it back to that edge line. But you can also, you know, when you do that, it's point at three and a half, and that's where we started off, right? Our first registration was three and a half, so we are good to go. So yeah, you do line it right up on that score line. What I mean is, on top of it. Do you see that? This is, if it's continued on, it's right at that score line. I say that not to confuse people, but to help out. And then this last one again, we have that score line. We're going to line it right up, meaning this is on there like if it was part of the score line. And this, you know, it doesn't matter because it's not going to be at three and a half anymore. It's going to be at some other number because obviously we're making a rectangular um, folder or envelope, should I say. Okay. So those are our score lines. So if you're familiar with envelope making, we do need to get rid of these little pieces here. I happen to know that uh, Creative Craft Products over there at Craft Stash, they do have a punch for that. So you can grab that if you'd like. I'll put in the links if it's um, available right now. I'll link it there in the description box. But for me, I, you know, I have other tools that can help you do that too. But I'm just going to cut this out. So on all four corners, we're just going to divot that little guy out. And it has like a sharp edge because we're just cutting it. But that's all we're doing. And then let's say you want to corner around your envelope. You can definitely go and corner around these corners if you want. I'm going to leave it just the way it is because that's what I have to show you guys. So I'm going to cut these two out and I'll be right back. One. And now we don't really need this at this point. Side. Uh, all you're going to do is basically fold everything in and you have your bone folder handy, which you guys know I always use my hands, but it does give it a nicer finished look if you use a bone folder. And then one other thing, and it depends on you, what you like to do when you fold this up you have this little point, you can either cut it off, like just eyeball it, you can score it and tuck it in, you can just tuck it in by hand, but again this is some really thick paper, so I don't want to tuck it in by hand, but what I'm going to do right now is just give myself a little zhuzh all around, it's some thick paper, and I'm probably going to cut it because I like to cut it off, <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of eyeball where I think it should be cut and just go for it, I mean this is the smallest amount if you put it on here, it's like an inch just cut right in half if that helps out uh, I don't know what kind of info that is but <laughs> it's there and I'm gonna put a little glue not quite at the edge because I don't want to glue my envelope shut and then I'm gonna put it on the edge of this that way I know that's touching where it needs to touch also right so the very little bit inside the edge here at the very edge of this top flap and I'm gonna hold that down because I'm using a white glue and I'll be right back okay guys and then we have our card base so if we bring this back do you put your cards in like that? I usually put them obviously like this so when the person pulls it out they see it the way it should be but really nice I mean that works really well I'm gonna give it a zhuzh here which means a bone fold because that is some thick paper just to get it trained up look at that and it works really nicely and it's a really great size um, okay so that is your basic envelope let's make an envelope box so um, I'm going to look at this and see what kinds of numbers it gives me See which one would be okay. sorry, I was just perusing the numbers they have here. So for the envelope box, they have some different numbers. They don't really all jive with like kind of what's going on here or even a standard card. It's just I would say pick the closest one to what you want. Um, I don't think, you know, for a box size that it's five and an eighth, that's a little bit too small. Six and a half by four, six and a half by five and an eighth, which is obviously a little bit bigger. But we can do that. So I'm gonna make the box so it's final the final box is six and a half by five and an eighth so we need a 10 inch piece of paper so i'll be right back with a 10 inch piece of okay, paper okay guys so for the envelope box that we're gonna make again i um 
was just looking at the instructions. Basically, it's similar to the um, envelope, but of course, we're having two lines. And if you read it, it does say to um, go ahead and do what you're supposed to do and then score at the, the inner score line first. I don't know if that matters because obviously it's one and then the other. But And then to score to the outer score line second. And then when you keep doing it, you're not going to worry again about whatever those numbers might be. You're just going to line that little area up, that flat line, the um, this area that we used before. Uh, what do they call it? I just want to use the terminology they're using uh, with the edge line, right? <laughs> so the edge line, which is the one that goes straight. And then we're just going to follow that. So if I look at this, remember we have a 10 inch square piece of paper. Uh, funny enough, we can do it two different ways with that 10 inch square piece of paper. And I think, since I already have it cut and this works out better for me today, we're going to make a box that's six and a half by five and an eighth by three quarters inch thick, right? Uh, so 10 inch square piece of paper and we're using score lines outer and inner. So the outer is five and the inner is six. That thing's said to score the inner score line first, but again, it's basically the same, right? If you have this piece of paper. And I'm going to go ahead and put that on the edge. Score at five. I'm sorry, the uh, inner, which is six. So I'm going to go here. Meaning the smaller, right? Because we're going six inches. Like It's not even inches, too. That's the other thing. <laughs> it is here, but once you do it here on this angle, it ends up being like a longer than six inches. But So at six, uh, we're going to put that right in there. This paper is not the thickest paper, but cute. And, and then at five, so my second number is... Five. And then after that, all we're going to do is use that. So we have those two. And there's our gap there. And that's why I was saying it's not really an inch. Because if you measure this, that's actually three quarters. It's not a full inch, even though you did five and six. We're going to turn this 90 degrees so that our score lines are up here. And again, it you know, you're going to measure using this. So I'm putting that score line right on the edge of this guy. So they're on the same plane. So we're doing that one, and then you're going to move this, I'm going to move this whole thing because I need some space, down to that score line, and same thing. Again, I didn't worry about what's going on over here as far as measuring, I just lined it up here. So now we're going to turn this, and again, line up that first score line with this guy. I might have moved that just a little bit. And if you do measure, it is going to be 5 and 6 this time, just like when we did the envelope. But for now, you don't really have to measure. All you have to do is just make sure to line up your paper score line with that guy. And then the second score line will line up there. And that should be about five, and it is. Again, we're not worried about that. I'm just letting you know. And then our last turn, again, lining up both score lines. So that top one. And then over here, lining that up again with the next score line. Okay. And so you have something that looks like this. So in the little picture on the box, they're saying to clip these away. So I'm going to do it in a way that's the same. So down here, you have like this little diamond. And actually, I was going to score on the white side of the paper, and I forgot. You can score on either side. It just depends on your paper and, you know, what you're thinking about doing. But I'm going to cut from here. There's a score line to there. And a lot of times when I do boxes, I'll do that, and I'll do the same thing over here and the same thing over here. But this time, I'm going to do them both at the same time. So I'm doing this side and this side straight up on that score line to that bottom score line and then we're just going to trim away these little excess bits right here and for this one it means just to the score line and on that score line so we're not cutting again but we did cut right we cut here and here now we have this little flap that's going to be our glue tab so that's what we have that there for and on the same the other side we'll do the same thing just cut that away and again up in here so you know, once you get the hang of it, I'm just doing it in this way so it's kind of methodical. But if I was to do it later, I probably would go ahead and do up to there, up to there, right? Up to here, up to here, and then just cut away the little divot. Sorry, this is a big piece of paper, so it's hard for me to get in frame. There we go. And I guess we'll do this together since we're here. And then on this side, just that little extra, right? The other little bit. Just cutting those away so they won't be in your way when you make your box. I need a little bit more. And I can put this away for now. And so this is basically an envelope if you have a thick card or a gift that's a little bit thicker. So all I'm going to do, since I scored everything on the nice side, I'm just going to 
score everything in. Another thing is, if you want to get rid of a set of tabs, you can definitely do that. Just at the very beginning, you could just cut this whole thing out. Because on the top of the envelope, I don't really like the tabs being there. Or we can fold them in and glue them down, like this. That's another way to get them out of the way. That might be a good way. We'll do that today, since they're still there. So I'm going to score all the score lines in, okay? So we we'll score everything in, and basically this thing comes in like this. Right, so those tabs at the bottom. <laughs> Why is this paper is kind of thin, so it's like real gangly on me right now. And this goes up like this, right? And again, we can cut this off later. And then we have these tabs at the top that can just be there, or you can tuck them in. If you cut them the opposite way, the tabs are up here, you can cut them away, or however. I kind of like the way I did it, so I'm going to show it to you. That way we can glue these guys out of the way. And it'll just look a little finished right there, like a little ridge that you meant to put there, you know? And I'll do the same thing on this side, just glue this tab in. Okay, so just that. And then on these guys, again, glue tabs. I like using white glues, but you can use whatever you like. And then these guys are going to go in first. And I have them kind of out this way. That way, when this makes contact, it'll actually touch. The glue will touch these panels. And I just want to see about how much glue I should put up here. So I'm going to just put a little glue on the very edge. Not to the very tip, because we know that's not going to touch anything. Basically like the envelope. So at the edge of this. The very, so we're putting the glue on this very inside right just like we did before and all the way up here not so much on the tip because we're gonna cut that off anyway at least i am if you're gonna tuck it in i guess that helps out because it's there but i'm just gonna set that up and i'm just looking to see that it's nice and straight and then i'll place my hand in there once i think everything's good just like that making sure those come in contact Again, nice and straight. So overall, uh, so far, pretty easy to work with. And, you know, I've done other, um, used other envelope makers, and a lot of times there are issues, either with the numbers or something, you know. Uh, I can see where this can be easily manipulated also if you want to change up your numbers, like, okay, you don't want a whole, you know, three-quarter inch. Maybe you only want this half an inch or a quarter of an inch, and you can kind of think about instead of maybe five and six, do, like you know it just depends on what you're doing but maybe five and a half and five or something like that and that'll shrink it this little size up and of course you probably want to play with the size of the paper and all that but it does have tons of measurements for you to start with and then this guy again well you know what this paper is really thin i can just fold it over the other paper was nice and thick that i used so i didn't want to just fold it over but this one it's a little bit of glue. Let me just add a little more glue there. Looks good. And fold that over and hold on to that. And I'll be right back. Okay, and there's like an envelope box, about three quarter inch gusset on that. And then you can close this up however you like. It'll glue it down, put a little sticker, whatever it is that you want to do with that. And then this guy over here, and I, again, I'm not corner rounding anything. That's what we have. I think what I'll do is I'll leave the rosette for uh, the next one because I think this is good that we went over the basics, basics. And then uh, one more thing I'll make is the little pillow box um, out of this guy here. So uh, it says cut card to 15 by 15 centimeters. I'll do that because my trimmer has centimeters, but you can just cut it down to about, what's 15 centimeters? Let's see. I'll let you know in just a minute, but I think that is about six inches it's basically a fit on here but i'll be right back okay, guys, to be honest i feel like 15 by 15 is a square and that doesn't seem quite right because it's a little bit longer than it is so i just did a 15 which actually ends up being uh <laughs> like just under six inches so if you did six inches that's fine but what, funny enough if you place this on here edge to edge because i'm gonna do the pillow box um you're already pretty much at the width the 15 centimeters so that's nice. I don't have to trim anything off at that point or anything like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, it says, before you start, place your card between the acetate and board, then push the ball tool into the acetate where any score lines intersect to help you find your starting points. So this piece is exactly the same size as this piece. Um, it has a little hole there. I'm not sure for what, but either way, if you can see these lines line up with whatever's going on down here. The solid lines are where you cut, and then the other lines are just where you score. So I, um, I suppose I can just, you know, place this piece of paper under here and then just know that the other thing is the same size. So, 
And if you want to tape things down or something like that, you know, go for it. I'm just going to eyeball everything. So I'm going to place this on here and just hold it with my hand. And then we take our little stylus. So the stylus on one side has a larger ball, which is going to be really nice for flower making and things like that. And then this one's a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go with a little bit smaller one. And basically, you're just pushing in here. You can feel where the lines should be. And I'm just going around. So this is going to take a little time, but hopefully you can kind of see what's going on there, getting those lines in there. And okay, let's say that one. I'm just making sure this is all lined up. You can feel the lines underneath here. Obviously, the acetate after a while is going to get a little bit beat up, but I don't think you're going to fall all the way through it or anything like that. That line is already made for us. It ends here because what happens is after we do this and we get this going, so there's that little part that makes it a pillow box. Go in here. And then just straight down here. It does have a little lumpiness to it because of the all the lines that this has going with it. And then one more up here, right? And then it says to turn your paper. So as you can see, half of it is here. Right? This other part isn't there. So they want you to just to turn the paper to finish that off. So I'm going to line it back up again, edge to edge, oh, this edge. <laughs> and actually it's this edge. Oh, interesting. Okay. So I'll make note of this for you guys. When you go to put it on this side, on this side we have a glue tab, right? Um, you don't really need a glue tab on the other side. So all I'm lining up now is this very end, you know, without the glue tab, against this line where the glue tab is, and then just making sure, you know, this, this little circular area is here and here, and this is straight over here on this side, and we're just going to place this back down, again, just laying the acetate over this little guide, because it's basically the same, and all we're going to do now is finish off the little, sorry, these guys. And I might be doing this, you know, in a way that's a little bit choppy. And I just keep going over it, just, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that's what I should do. Let me see if that's deep enough. It looks pretty good. Again, this is all by hand, so I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut right on the score line. It is kind of a wide score line, so if you want to cut on the outside of that, or however you would like to do that, go for it. And I'm just going to keep kind of like that, being the end of that tab, the glue tab. So I'm going to cut this other side basically just the same. Loop, loop, and I'll grab it. then all we have here is I can fold this over. It's not perfect as far as my cutting, I'm sure, but you know, the cute little project. And definitely handmade. I know some people like working with templates and some don't, <laughs> but look at that. And then as you push this guy in, oh my goodness, just give it a little boop, boop, boop on that little curve there. And sometimes I'll take like some tool like this just to flatten it out, but it's not the biggest deal. That's basically just how you push it in when you close it. So I'm going to go to all of them and give it kind of a, a fold like that. I'll do the same thing on this other That's side. Cute. <laughs> That's actually really quick. I mean, now that I know kind of how to do it and then omitting the glue tab on the second side when you get there. Uh, you can just keep this flat closed if you want. Look at that. So 15 centimeters. Again, it's just shy of 6 inches. Most cutters do have a centimeter option, you know what I'm saying, as you use your rotary cutter or your uh, trimmer type thing. Guillotine. And if you want to perfect this, like let's say I'm just like, oh, well, I really need this to be right. I can come in here and kind of just round that out a little bit. <laughs> See, I was chopping it a little bit too much. But anyway, so you have that. I'm going to let that set up just a minute before we really pop it up. Okay, I think we're ready. Look at it. That is so cute. And then since we already have this trained, you can look at it and see which side looks the nicest and pop that one on the top when the other one's going in. However... Look at that. I'm going to try to soften that with my nail. Oh my gosh. And again, both of these sides look pretty nice. Actually, yeah, I would say we should do it the same. Once you got one side down, you should probably do the other side the same, or you're going to have this part here and that part, you know. So this side 
is clean like this and then on the other side is where you have the little flaps that are visible and that makes a little pillow box that's like just over five inches I mean it's five inches maybe a little bit less right and what you can actually place in here two and a half inches tall or so look at that so cute and about an inch wide oh my goodness I can make these all day <laughs> so cute okay um, again so yeah so we have a few different projects made with the um, scoreboard you know, some basic things clearly and of course I mean this kind of thing it's a scoring board so like okay I have my card base but you know I want uh, this card to be like a flip back card or whatever so four and a quarter and then the next one would be two and an eighth further from that so it's six and three eighths so at six and uh, three eighths I would put another line and now you have like a little card that has like a fold back or whatever it is you want to do concertine all these different fun card things of course we can do with um, a scoring board and then we have the I love that it has all the little info just right on here especially like the box the gift box stuff because that's basic but you know like I said every time I come up with my numbers and I rework it but I mean they go from like the smallest increments of numbers and um, thicknesses and all that kind of stuff really really cool um, alright guys and one more thing I do want to mention on theirs when they make their boxes what they want you to do is fold it over kind of like I did here sorry that was a little bit loud <laughs> um, that extra bit so all these side pieces would have an extra fold over which would make a really nice finished box right so really nice to see alright guys uh, thanks for watching keep an eye out for more tutorials using the uh, scoreboard possibly a box like I just mentioned definitely some uh, rosettes and I'll see you guys at the next one bye now